and welcome to another video and a community that believes weird is wonderful and magic is real. And a video that we have been doing after every book that we've been reading in the book club. I had to think about that. In the book club videos we've been doing. So we just wrapped up book three, which is The Prisoner of Azkaban. And we've been doing a video after everyone that is a favorites in my collection. So why stop with the first two when we're getting real interesting with Prisoner of Azkaban? So today I'm going to be covering 13. We're keeping it nice and odd. Uh, favorites in my collection, including two brand new ones to me. I'm so excited. So, um, I, and I'm even themed. I'm, I'm a prisoner um, of Azkaban <laughs> with this shirt. So anyway, I don't know why I pointed that out. <laughs> Let's get started on all 13 items. The first one that we're going to be doing is one that I recently showed you guys, but I really like it. And this is a favorites collection. And it's part of a collection that... <laughs> I mean, some people love, some people don't. I obviously love them, and they are Funkos. And that one is going to be the new, I was gonna say brand new, but new-ish, serious block with scabbers in his Azkaban outfit. Like I said, we did already show this one, but um, my husband thought it really funny that we are covering 13 items, and the first one be serious black, because if you know the books, you know the tale of the 13 dining and the first to rise is the first to die. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm so sorry, serious. It was crushing, okay. But I just love the little scabbers. Um, I have a few serious, seriouses, serious eye. <laughs> but this one's probably my favorite. So it is one of two Funkos in this lot. Um, we have much more to cover, but that is item number one. Um, we need to now put him to rest. The next two items are brand new to me. I haven't even unboxed them and they are both from Noble Collection. I'm so excited. I have wanted these. They've been on my list for a while. Um, and they're just classic items and they fit into Prisoner of Azkaban. And this one's real fitting to the first item because we got us Serious Black's wand. So we are, I wouldn't say we're huge wand collectors, but we do enjoy wands. We're just more particular. We either go with characters that we love or the style of wand that we enjoy. And we love Serious Black here. So we finally got it. So let's unbox this wand. Um, and I will say, I think every wand that we have is a Noble Collection wand, but I do eventually want to get a custom wand. That would be pretty cool. And these two items, the wand and the one coming after, we bought them at Barnes & Noble because Barnes & Noble switched over to doing the newer boxes, which is really cool. Riches, rich, if only, <laughs> which is really cool. So here is the box and we've got that look on the side here. Like I said, I have not seen this wand yet. Oh, I didn't remember. Products inspired by the world of Harry Potter. Oh, okay, we're all over the place, which it says right here. Then we have our little like velvety business. I don't know, our sheer business. I really like Sirius's wand. Um, so let's look at it. So his wand is kind of more basic in shape, but it has some nice kind of engraved detail to it. So the shape is a little bit more straight, but like look at the detail on the end here. And it's a nice brown color. So it has that woody color. Um, so it's not quite black, but a darker brown. Then we got these like runes on the end over here. And it's more of a square shape. I like that where it then turns into a curved and tipped end. So, so cool. Um, I'm really excited. I'm hoping to collect eventually like all of our favorite characters. I need to sort out who all of my favorite characters are, but let me know in those comments. Um, how do you go about collecting wands? Do you collect any? Are you anything like us? Um, and what do you have? So that is item number two. The next item is a really affordable one. When you're going Noble Collection wise and doing the replicas, I would probably put this at top of your list as far as affordability and ease of getting because I'm pretty sure it was somewhere around $35. And again, you can get this at Barnes & Noble. So if you are a member, you're gonna get another 10% off, which we did. And we got ourselves the Marauder's Map. Um, obviously, the Marauder's Map plays quite a role in Prisoner of Azkaban, being passed over by the Weasley twins, um, and of course created by the Marauders. So, let's take it out. Here is the Marauder's Map. You can see by like the size to my head how tall it is, which feels really appropriate to what we see in the films. But we have that nice detail right in the center, 
We've got the, um, I just forgot the Marauders names. Mooney Worm, Wormtail Padfoot and Prongs at the top. Look at all the detail there. And as you see, it splits in the middle just like it does in the film. So let's go ahead and just like open it up. Let's see if we do this. Oh Lord, Baldy, we can do this. She is going to be longity long. Okay, here we go. She goes far out. I didn't even realize it goes that far out. Let me show you just like one side. So here is the center, which also has a fold out piece. We'll get to that one. But then that opens up. I'm not sure how one would go about displaying this opened. I do have a way, or I have an idea of a way, excuse me, of displaying it closed. We'll get into that. And then here is the other side. It is actually paper, but it's a nice thick paper. So look at all the detail. Let me take a quick look and see if I see any people on here that we saw represented. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> In the corner. It says, peeves may lurk here. I love that. Um, we're gonna get a lot of little details that are gonna be fun to just stare at this and see what we see. Beware moving staircases, beware Boggart in this closet. Um, like just lots of stuff that we probably didn't see in the films. And then of course there are the classes listed on, well, we just lost that. <laughs> Where are they? Where are those classes? Here they are, around the edge. We've got the classes, but there's lots of little like, lost wands on here. So many details. And then in the center, we've got, it says Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. And then that, can we do this, opens up like this. Da -da -da. I feel like I'm blocking my mic right now, but oh Lord. Can we do this? Look at that. So the, you get the continuation of the map across it once you open it up. So cool. And then on the side flaps, like before you extend it super far, you even have these that open up top to bottom and then side to side. Kind of, I feel like it represents all the hidden um, passageways and stuff, even though it's not that, it's just a neat way of doing it. And then the back has this sort of like old parchment pattern on it. Um, I do know if you want to display, do I know? Maybe I should check. Last I checked, if you want to display the Marauder's map, fold it up on the wall. Noble Collection has a frame that fits this perfect, per perfectly, perpendicularly, perfectly. <laughs> oh Lord, Aubrey. Um, so it would just like sit flat and unopened, which can be really nice. I'm kind of considering it. It's it's not a bad looking frame. Um, otherwise, she's a challenging one to display, but it's a nice item to have and just be kind of laying around, you know what I'm saying? Okay, the next item, okay, is gonna be kind of a little bit of a theme in here, but you guys know that I like these kinds of items and I haven't shown this one in a little while. It comes out and it's featured a lot during Halloween time and it's not the only one like that probably because Prisoner of Azkaban starts to get a little bit darker. Um, but it is the Monster Book of Monsters plush by Noble Collection. This is maybe one of my favorite plushes. Like, I mean, what? Also quite affordable. I feel like this one was in the $40 range. Everything in here that can be linked will be linked down below. Um, but I love the detail. It's nice and kind of engraved, engraved, embroidered on the top and the bottom where it says Monster Book of Monsters. We have this like indentation, just like we get. We got the four eyes, which I do prefer. Not all of them have that. And we have this cute little tongue over here. Then we have the, sorry, that's the tongue. We got the little chompers right here. And then we even get the sort of pages appearance all around. Look at the little like innards of the, oh my God, we didn't even stroke the spine. What were we thinking? You gotta stroke that spine. It does come with a nice little fluffy business if you wanna floof this. I have leaned on this pillow quite a lot and it's held up really well, but this is one I could probably see myself getting another one down the road, cause why not, you know? The Monster Book of Monsters. We do have another Monster Book of Monsters that I love and it comes out Halloween time too. Um, and we kind of keep it in a container. If you saw the Halloween video with like shredded pages, it's really fun and cool. 
Anyway, love that plush. Not the last one in this video. What was that? I don't know. Next up is another Funko, and yes, I did recently show you this, and it's probably because they recently dropped a Prisoner of Azkaban line with Funko, but it might be one of my favorite Funkos. I feel like if you're gonna get anything from that line, it's gotta be Stan. It's gotta be Stan the man, you know what I'm saying? Like, the details on this guy, I just adore. We even have the pimply business on his face. He's holding the ticket, as I pointed out. It even says, what, oh shoot, what does it say on there? It says his name on there, like on the little badge. It's got the ticket dispenser, um, all of that. The only thing I will say is Stan does not want to stand up very well. Um, so I lean him up next to something, but he's super cute. I hope Funko does more characters like this that we just don't see represented very much. You know what I'm saying? Come on now. But that's the last Funko in this video. The next item is kind of a, not a one of a kind, but it was a limited edition item, so I probably won't be able to link it down below. Um, and it was from Zavi, Z-A-V-V-I. Um, and it is the Azkaban, or Sirius Black's Azkaban prison sign. And it's got that, like, it's very weighty. I'll show it to you. Oh, here. It's got that kind of replica vibe. It's just, it's nice and heavy. It looks like it's stone, because you know, they've been through enough. We must weigh them down around the neck. <laughs> um, all of the same details that would be across here, his number are represented. We Just the coloring is really nice with that little bit of fading. It's very, very similar. It is meant to be a replica. Other than the backside, you know what I'm saying? We, we get all that licensing information, but it does come with a chain. And if I put it on, that is about where it lands, which isn't too bad. I feel like it could be a little bit longer because it is normally in their hands. If I remember Lucius, it was in his hands, but that's not too bad. And you could always adjust the chain if you wanted to, but this might be one of my favorite Prisoner of Azkaban items. And that one we literally had to pull out of a Halloween tub because we feel like it suits Halloween really well, which is coming up. Already thinking about that one. Continuing with the spooky vibes, it's hard for me not to mention something from the Magical Creatures line from Noble Collection. And of all the things, we've gotta go Dementor. So this is the Magical Creatures line. They come in these containers. We don't have all of them. I don't know if I want all of them, but there are quite a few left I'd like to get. Um, but basically, you take this off here. As you can see, this comes right out. So here's the backing. We've got Hogwarts because you know, them Dementors be floating all over the place. And then you have the sort of insert area. And all of them are different, but I think all of them at least separate, which gives you an opportunity to play around with it. So with this Dementor, for those of you that have watched our previous Halloween videos, we normally put him in a cloche. We kind of get, so he's even got some on him. We kind of put some like spooky, um, kind of like foggy, like spiderweb stuff at the base and add lights underneath to give a smoky vibe. Um, we might try and do even better, but I feel like it pulls it off. He is neat. There's a lot of details. That's one thing that I love about the Magical Creatures line. Um, he's a magical creature, right? A Dementor, I suppose. I don't know about magical, but <laughs> definitely a creature. So there is that item. Okay, this next item, she might be a little abnormal of choice, okay? But these are my favorites. And I was going to do this one right here, this Buckbeak right here, because Buckbeak has got to be represented in Prisoner of Azkaban. But then I saw this clamped around my tripod and I squealed because this is very me. And it is part of the, and it's very cutesy, which obviously isn't very Prisoner of Azkaban-y, but hey, whatever. Um, it's part of the Cutie Cuff line. It is Buckbeak as a Cutie Cuff. If you don't know, can I do it? Oh, that was fairly smooth. <laughs> fairly. They are basically like snap bracelets. And, um, cause yes, this isn't just a replicas video. It's my favorite items. How cute is he? So they just snap around your wrist, um, or you can do like me and put them on your tripod, or you can also do like me, uh, or you could just do you. But I also put him on, or I put cutie cuffs in general on my scooter, on my like kind of hand handbag, tote bag handles. They're really fun. So I think I'm gonna leave them on for the rest of this video. Gotta represent the buck beaks. Now, 
we got to represent also Trelawney and Divination. And I actually do not have, I know a lot of collectors, this would be a staple item in their collection, and that is the Grim Teacup. Well, I'm hoping eventually to do a little bit of a DIY around that one. Not a little bit, it would be a DIY. I don't know why I always do that. <laughs> um, but this item, I feel like is more original. It's a little bit different and embraces the in-world aspect that we like to go for here in this house. And it is an item that came from Magic Delivered. I can't remember the name of the crate. I think it might've been a divination focused crate, but it is this teacup right here. So it came with this teacup. So here is the saucer, which really does give me Trelawney vibes. Can we not drop this one? That would be great. I don't see it surviving. Um, and then it came with this card. So basically when you unboxed the subscription box, you got this card and you could have gotten any one of these different prophecies. So if you zoom in here, you'll see like, if you zoom in, if I show you up close, you can see all the different options which I thought was really neat. It made it feel more like you were getting a prophecy because it was more custom to you. Um, and the one that I got, so you tip it up to see the prophecy was a little butterfly. And the butterfly represented success and pleasure. I mean, I'm not opposed to most things on these prophecies here, but that is that one. Um, but yeah, I love the gold trim on these. I love the gold trim on the edge there. And I just loved that it was different. Everybody, when they do a teacup, it's always the grim. The grim is great. I do want the grim. And I've got some ideas for how to approach that DIY when we get to it. And I may have quite a collection of teacups, okay, <laughs> to prep myself for that. But it's just really unique. I highly recommend. I'm pretty sure it's available still on Magic Delivered. And again, I'll link it down below. Also from a subscription box and one that is not, well, the subscription box is not available anymore. We have thoughts, right? And we all know, we all know how this one ended. Um, but it is probably a fan favorite from that subscription box. And that is Lit Joy. Um, so LitJoy still does have a magical shop. Uh, I'm not super impressed with the new items, uh, but this is an oldie but a goodie in my opinion, and it is the Spine Candle. There are quite a few Spine Candles out there. I've seen some by some small artists that are really well made. Um, I'm trying to think of some other ones out there. If you know any, let me know in the comments down below, but I did really enjoy the details on this. It, it's probably resin, but it almost reads ceramic as far as the weight goes. But here is like some of the details of the spine. As you know, this is going to be lupin related or defense against the dark arts classroom related. And then at the top, there is a little hole for a tea light candle. So I put just this like artificial one in there and you have a little light. How cute is that? And this spine candle, because it's so popular, it does sell out often, but they do keep bringing it back. The last time I checked, it was still in stock. I think it was somewhere around the $40 range. I might end up getting more of these over time. I don't know. I kind of swore off from buying lit, from Lit Joy, but we'll see. I mentioned there were more plushies because I love them. This is a favorites video. And the next two items are just that. And I have them together because they really go well together. And they are quite significant in the story, especially one of them. And those are Scabbers and Crookshanks. Are they not so cute? They are some of my favorite plushes. Is this Crookshanks rough around the edges? Yes. But Crookshanks is rough around the edges, okay? Like, look at that, like, sourpuss face. I love, I love the little, I don't know what kind of cat this actually is, um, with a little like poochy mouth. Um, I do like that he is really floofy, but then even the paws, so like here, that is more of a shave down vibe. Um, same for the back paw. The only thing, I would like it a little more kneesily. So at the end, the tail would be, this would be more narrow, and then this part would be a little bit more poofy. Um, that would be really cool, but I like that he's laying down. There is a Crookshanks that's walking. That one's kind of tempting. Basically, we just need more Crookshanks merch. He's amazing. He's the hero of the story. If you have not read the books, um, if you've been reading along with us, you already know this, but if you've not read the books and you've only seen the movies, I highly, highly encourage reading the books um, because he's much more significant than the movies ever represent. I'm just saying. And then Scabbers here. So there have been a few Scabbers. There's been one in a subscription box. I think I've seen one even at my like local bookstore. This one, in my opinion, is the best. I just like love the... Um, 
different texture and color, but also there's little patches. He's quite worn out. We got this patch here. Um, and we get the representation of the missing toe there. Gotta have that. If you don't have that, it's just a rat. It's not a scabbers, you know what I'm saying? All right, that is the last of the plushes. I think if you know your prisoner of Azkaban stuff, you're gonna know what the last item should be, okay? And that item is a little dusty. Let me just, she was on the top shelf here. We always display this item. It's also from Noble Collection and it is the Time Turner. Um, this is like a lot of the other Noble Collection replicas, like the Horcruxes, um, well, mostly the Horcruxes, like uh, the necklace, the, the locket, that's what I'm thinking of, where they come in this nice display container. So this one is wooden and square. And then what happens is the top portion, can we smoothly do this? Comes out like that, where the back of the necklace is tucked into this little kind of um, section in the back. Um, but it's supposed to be as close to replica as possible. So the necklace is, is quite significant in size as far as the time turner goes. We want that sucker to stand out. I do feel like the necklace should be a good bit longer from what we see in the film and how much is dangling down after she picks it up, how much kind of length there still is. Um, but what it does have, is I don't want to take it off because it takes quite a bit to get it like exactly level. I'm not sure if you can see, but it does have the inscription on the edge there and it does rotate in both directions. She's challenging to do <laughs> like this, but yeah, and it's got the little bit of kind of sand in the middle there and we done, we done ruined it. I'm gonna have to sort that out. Um, but you basically hook it on these and, and try and eyeball that to get it even. And then you would just drop these in the back section and then the rest of it would just ignore that hanging down. The rest of it would hang in the front and display nicely. But that is the last item from the favorites Prisoner of Azkaban um, of my collection. Are there more I wanna get? Yes, we don't have a lot of like Lupin representation. What was the other thing? There was another thing I just saw. I was like, I need that. Oh, I want to get the um, like elephant prophecy orb that Noble Collection has. There's still a few. No I'm trying to slowly get the Noble Collection things until we run out. Um, savor those suckers. But yeah, I would love to know what are your favorites in your collection, Prisoner of Azkaban items, and what would you like to see made from Prisoner of Azkaban? Let me know in those comments down below. But until next time, my magical friends, remember to stroke that spine, love what you love with everything you have, and keep making magic. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye!